Mummies have always been an intriguing subject for archaeologists as well as filmmakers. They make appearances in popular culture through captivating cinematic works. The themes surrounding mummies often revolve around a curse or some gruesome tragedy. Today, we delve into a mummy preserved so naturally that through forensic examination, the cause of death is more accurately known than many contemporary cases. Alongside this, there's a chilling curse that few pay attention to. Just a little more than three decades ago, Europe's most famous mummy was discovered lying face down in the ice on the edge of a lake nearly two miles high in the Atstel Alps, bordering Austria and Italy. Naturally preserved by more than 5,000 years of sun, wind, and freezing temperatures, the leathery remains of Otzi the Iceman quickly became a global sensation. The subject of countless books and documentaries, and even a feature film reconstructing his life in Neolithic Europe and his violent death. He was likely in a lot of pain. He was probably deeply exhausted after losing a desperate fight to the death against several unknown attackers. And there he lay, crispy fresh, and with a belly full of goat bacon for the better part of 53 centuries. This individual's fatally bad luck became science's incredible good fortune when his remains were discovered in 1991. Stunningly well preserved and offering a treasure trove of insight into what life was like in the Neolithic period. After three decades or so of scientific poking and prodding, we know an almost uncomfortable amount about Otzi as he would later be nicknamed in recognition of the fact that he bit his last bacon in the Otstel Alps. As National Geographic reports, we know he had hardened arteries, worn joints, gallstones, parasitic worms, and frostbite. And he was dealing with a touch of arsenic poisoning, likely from working with metal ore. So it's probably fair to observe that his health wasn't optimal for battles to the death in sub-zero conditions. Astonishingly, we even know he has at least 19 living relatives, the closest of whom, live science reports, likely live in present-day Sardinia land of tin fish and cut-price housing. Based on his DNA signature, Otzi was part of the migration of Neolithic farmers that came through Anatoly 8,000 to 6,000 years ago replacing Europe's Paleolithic hunters and gatherers. His maternal genetic heritage no longer exists in modern populations, but his paternal line lives on in groups found on Mediterranean islands, especially Sardinia. Otzi was found wearing only a single shoe, but many of his belongings were subsequently recovered around the site where he was found. His leggings and coats were lighter, one heavier were pieced together from the hides of local sheep and goats. His shoes were stuffed with wild grass and laced with rock leather. His fur hat was from a brown bear. The Iceman trekked through the Otstel Alps with a wood frame backpack and a deerskin quiver with 20 arrow shafts, only two of which had arrow heads. His flint dagger was sharpened with a tool fashioned from lime tree wood and a fire-hardened antler tip. A birch bark container, similar to those still made in the region today, held smoldering charcoal wrapped in fresh maple leaves that would have allowed him to quickly make a fire. One of the most important objects is Otzi's sublime copper axe. Secured to a U-handle with cow leather and birch tar, the blade was cast from a mold and is 99.7% pure copper. It was an extraordinarily wealthy item for the time, and its discovery pushed back the beginning of the European Copper Age by a thousand years. In the hours before his death, Otzi had a hearty meal of einkorn wheat, red deer, and ibex. It took researchers 18 years to identify his stomach via a 2009 CT scan because the organ had shifted under his ribs to where his lower lungs are located. A gash between the thumb and first finger of his right hand revealed that Otzi had been stabbed a few days before he died. 
It was an active defensive wound, meaning he likely tried to grab the blade. That wound was still healing when he was attacked again with an arrow that hit an artery in his back left shoulder. He may have had time to sit down and perhaps try to pull the arrow out, but it's unlikely he could have reached it before he bled to death within minutes. The Iceman also had substantial brain hemorrhaging, but experts disagree about its cause. Did someone finish him off with a blow to the head? Did he fall and hit his head on a rock? The researchers did not find evidence for either of these scenarios. Based on analysis of pollen and the maple leaves he carried, Otzi died in early summer. One theory posits that warm summer winds dried him out. But Oliver Peschel, the Munich-based forensic pathologist in charge of Otzi's conservation, says it had to have been the frigid temperatures of the high mountain pass that preserved the Iceman. Because his brain, which would usually liquefy along with other organs a few days after death, froze quickly, preserving it in desiccated form. While hundreds of studies have already been done on Otzi, more are in the works. Now that the Institute for Mummy Studies has sequenced Otzi's genome, they're genetically analyzing his gut microbiome. We would like to understand the whole community of bacteria that lived inside his stomach and his intestines, says Albert Zink, head of the Uric Institute of Mummy Studies in Bolzano. The diversity of our gut flora appears linked to our health, so researchers are keen to see the makeup of Otzi's. One early find, part of an ongoing study by the University of Trento involving Otzi and 6,500 modern people, reveals that the Iceman had three of the four strains of the bacterium Prevotella copri. Indigenous people around the world have a variety of strains of the bacterium in their gut, but the 30% of modern Westerners with Prevotella copri have just one, which tends to take over, reducing diversity. Another discovery is that Otzi's gut contained Helicobacter pylori, a bacterium found today in half of the world's population with severe or deadly health consequences for about 10% of us. The dominant strain of Helicobacter pylori in Europe today is a hybrid of Asian and African strains. Otzi's strain is nearly purely Asian, which suggests the African strain arrived in Europe after his death. This has implications for the debate over whether Helicobacter pylori is a natural member of our gut flora or needs to be treated with an antibiotic as soon as it's identified. Another microbiome study of his gut found the pathogenic ancestor strain of Clostridium perfringens, today a common cause of food poisoning. Alongside being a nearly perfectly preserved mummy, our Iceman is also renowned for the chilling tale of a fearsome curse. Let's flash back to 1991 when the first team of scientists began their pokings and pryings into the life and death of the mysterious Iceman. According to The Independent, Rainer Hen, a forensic pathologist, was the first scientist to touch Otzi when he transferred his remains to a body bag. Dr. Hen died in a head-on collision in 1992 en route to a conference where he planned to present his stunning findings. Shortly afterward, the mountaineer who helped Dr. Hen reach Otzi's remains would experience a fatal convergence of gravity and geology when a large rock fell on his head. Then the journalist who filmed Otzi's extraction died of a brain tumor. So that's three deaths, with two of them probably cinematic enough to flesh out a decent first act if Otzi's curse were a B-grade horror movie. It gets cursier, The Guardian reports that Helmut Simon The man who first stumbled across Otzi's long-frozen visage disappeared on a hike. He was later discovered at the base of a 300-foot-tall cliff, leaving little doubt that his final few seconds involved rapid movement between two fixed geographical points on a vertical plane. Adding to the whole ancient curse vibe, Helmut reportedly died a bitter man, resentful that his find had not brought him rewards and acclaim. Then the man who helped find Helmut died while attending his funeral, and Conrad Spindler, the then leading expert on the Iceman, also died suddenly.
speaking about the curse, Spindler is on record as saying, I think it's a load of rubbish. It is all a media hype. The next thing you will be saying, I will be next, awkward. Which brings us to the seventh and last known case of the Iceman's curse so far. In 2005, the scientist whose analysis of Otzi revealed so much about the doomed man's likely final moments was found dead in his home. The independent article reports that the autopsy proved inconclusive. If you weren't keeping count, that's a total of seven unusual deaths among people directly involved with Otzi. Given the scores of archaeologists, mountaineers, and journalists involved in studies of the Iceman over the years, Otzi's hit rate isn't likely high enough to warrant full-blown panic. But maybe think twice if you're ever asked to participate in research involving goat bacon.